Oh, yeah, I want to get a good shot. Okay, you ready? Go. go. One, two, three. All right, it's a bright and early day. It's time to be a doctor. Guy is such an aggressive tone. All right, let's take this little guy for a walk. You ready? Let's go. Look at that, peeing right on the grate to not make a mess. I trained him well. You can't see the Empire State Building. It's right there. Touch it. Touch it. As any veteran dog owner will tell you, one of the biggest struggles of having a pup is when you're walking them in the morning and you want to get to work and your dog refuses to poo. Bear, go poop. My first patient today is actually at 8 a.m. But I want to get in a little earlier to start working on my notes from the other day. Notes are the bane of the existence of a doctor because not only do we want to see the patient spend time with them, but then we become slaves to the electronic medical record. It's pretty brutal. <laughs> what is that? Bear, you want to put that away? All right, let's get to work. Today I'm going to be working a long 12, 14 hour shift as an outpatient family medicine doctor. Now what does outpatient mean? It means that I'm going to be seeing patients in an office setting where I don't have to admit them, meaning that they are not going to stay overnight in the hospital. So it's basically when you go in for your doctor's visit for a checkup, for a problem, uh, that's what I'm going to be doing today. That's primarily actually what I do. So today we'll probably have around 30 patients where maybe after each visit I'll come and tell you what I did and we can have a little learning opportunity. As if, oh my God, major fail. When I see patients uh, in my office, I see them for anything. Acute problems, meaning like they get sick today or they have pain today or something's going on where it's an urgent matter. But I also see them for primary care meaning that they're coming in for chronic disease management, counseling. So I have diabetic patients that need to check their numbers, make sure they're taking their medications optimally. It's a really fun job because you really never know what's going to happen. <laughs> you don't know what kind of patient's going to walk in. It God, if you guys didn't know any better, you would have thought I got into an accident. My commute isn't that bad. It's around 45 minutes. Um, it's a reverse commute. Some people are like, wait, you work in New Jersey but live in New York yeah that's actually a great strategy because I do a lot of TV stuff in New York so I have to be here but then I love working in New Jersey because that's where I did my residency training and I built up this patient panel of patients I actually love and have a connection with I'm growing old with them <laughs> it's kind of funny to say I think we got some great content coming God, I wonder what kind of clip I need to buy to keep this Hey, <laughs> Steven. I'm all By the way, now that we're just hanging out here, I'm having some water and I'm driving to work, I need you to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell and set your alerts to all just so the YouTube algorithm doesn't mess with us any further. I know only 15% of you have done that so far. Step up your game. You can do better. Hit that notification bell. Gonna get in trouble? Who's excited Hi, for work? Hello. How are you? Good morning. Are you excited for work, Ginny? Oh, I'm so excited to see your face. Isn't it a great day to save lives? I'm going to sit on this garbage can here. Don't sit on the garbage no, can. No, I'm going to sit on the garbage can. Oh, Don't tell me what God. to do. You're not my mom. Maybe my work mom. What's the craziest thing you've ever seen? You're making me think back here. Yeah. People that have passed and there's a smile appears on their face within seconds of them totally passing away. Uh, that's pretty amazing. Any good stories, Jenny? Let's cheer people up. Michael, the good stories is there's lots of men walking around with nice scrubs. Ooh. That's the best story. Ginny's getting feisty today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's talk about INR. Okay, what about INR? Let's talk about Not on the vlog. Why not? Okay. INR is when a patient comes in for a test to see if they're taking their Coumadin properly and appropriately, so let's check it out. So when you're looking at an INR, what I'm looking at is to figure out, A, is the patient's dosage correct? B, are they coming in at the right intervals? So if their levels are all over the place and we can't get any stability, we have to figure out why that's happening and we have to check them more often. But if they're consistently having good numbers, we can spread them out. Hey, 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 hey. 
they represent. Are. Represent. Yes. Jose. Oh, that's so baby. Where'd you get this from? Today's a hospital vlog day, baby. Woo! You ready for I'm it? I'm ready. You I'm trying ready. to get Liddy? I'm ready. I'm ready to get Liddy. <laughs> Yo, you gotta patience. DJ it up. <laughs> DJ it for a patient. What you wanna hear? I wanna hear a little re reggaeton. All right, I got you. Hit me with that little reggaeton. Oh, Come on. <laughs> Come on, it's a party. No. No. All right, Jose, how many patients are you checking in right now? You don't look like you're working just, too I hard. I just got it. All right, go do your job, because oh, I, I need to see my patients. So my typical day goes like this. I come in, I try and catch up on the computer to call patients back, to look at results, to write some notes that I missed the previous day. And then I go in and every 15, 20 minutes, I have a new patient. I'm in and out of the rooms, I'm in and out of the rooms. Like I just came out of a room with a patient who was complaining about really bad allergies. And it's really interesting because uh, typical pollen season is now over and now we're getting into that uh, winter time allergy season. And sometimes if you're using the same allergy medication for too long, you can actually build up a tolerance to it. And you need to rotate them. So what we're doing for this patient is we're changing up the allergy medications. We're also giving medications directly for where the symptoms are present. So you think about the nose, the eyes, and we're really trying to get them better by thinking big picture, because it's not enough to just think about prevention. We also need to think about treating the active symptoms. Um, today's gonna be a busy day, but I'm excited to get started. So I just had to call a patient back um, for his ultrasound. He came in with gynecomastia, which is he had a breast mass basically breast tissue developing. And when we do that, we have to check hormonal levels. If those hormonal levels are elevated, then we gotta do an ultrasound. If the ultrasound is negative, then we gotta do a CAT scan. If that's negative, then we know something. So it's really interesting how we have to follow these sets of guidelines so that we don't do extra testing and we don't do under testing. It's a very fine line that we have to follow here. What's going on? What's good? You wanna tell the peeps if you get any crazy calls of people asking to come see me? Uh, yeah. Hi, um, can I speak to Dr. Dr. Mike? Uh, no. <laughs> can I help you? Yeah, but, um, can I, can, can I just talk to him? Can I have his number? No, no, no. <laughs> we don't deal with that here, sorry. So I'm with Dr. Stuart Green here. Hello. Hi. Who is an expert in everything when it comes to mental health. <laughs> Taught me everything I know. I talk a lot about anxiety and depression on my channel, how rates are going up. Is that something you've noticed? There is a lot more sort of tension in the large surrounding environment sure. of the country uh, uh, these days. Uh, and uh, those things, of course, impact patients' lives and people who are susceptible to developing uh, significant anxiety, anxiety disorders, mm -hmm. as we say. So yes, there's more of it and it's affecting youth as well. All right, because I got a really long day. I only get to eat once before I get home, which is going to be around like 10 p.m. So I picked up some Chipotle. All right, Tia, what are you going to tell me? You're going to tell me about a, a public patient who is here for an employee physical. We do that here, right? Yes, we do, actually. And what do we do for generally for those patients? Um, we just make sure they could breathe and they have a pulse. What? <laughs> what does a CMA do? Because no one can answer this question. Oh, okay. Well, generally, it's a medical assistant. So I'm still able to, like nurses back in the day, bring patients in, do vital signs, draw blood, give injections, and assist with procedures, like skin biopsies. Toenail you gave the greatest answer so far. No problem. You're a rock star. Yes. So I just had a pretty uh, interesting patient encounter. Patient's coming in for an earache. I look through the patient's notes and she's been here a lot. And I see that she's been diagnosed with cancer. It was familiar to me. So I looked back in my notes and I found that I saw this patient um, about a year ago. And it was actually me who caught the cancer. I didn't know this. When I walked into the room, the patient was basically in tears because she was happy to see me because I was the one that initially got the x-ray to find her cancer. Because what happened was she had pneumonia, they did an x-ray, but then when you get a pneumonia, the way it shows up on an x-ray, it can actually cover the cancer if there is a cancer or anything there. So that's why whenever person gets better, we ask them to come back in for a follow-up x-ray to make sure that there's nothing behind the pneumonia. And what do you know? She was still a little bit coughing. Month went by. I said, let's get another x-ray. Boom. There was something else there. Ended up getting a CAT scan a few days later. and We found a cancer that was treated. Now she's doing great. But now for her to come in for an earache and be doing well after being diagnosed, treated, and her being really happy, 
she tells me something really cute. She says, my kids, especially the little one, are such big fans of yours. And I said, because of YouTube? They're like, no, because you saved my life. And I said, oh, how old is your little one? She's like 39. <laughs> we have one of our staff members that's been here for almost a decade and a half. So we're gonna go say goodbye to her, but she's not ready. It's a surprise. Hey! We love you. Cut the cake. Cut the cake. Avet, we're trying to teach everybody how to be healthy and happy, and what are you doing? What are you doing here? You really well, trying to call me out after I'm you gonna, your cake. You know, I didn't eat cake. I didn't, I didn't eat no cake. <laughs> Look at that. What is that? He had cake. I didn't have cake. Cut the cake. Uh, okay. Can you tell I'm a little tired? Yeah, it's uh, past 8 p.m. We started this day at 6. I'm almost there, the tail end. Just so you understand the struggle that a doctor has to go through. Like, I've worked nonstop pretty much all day for these 12, 13 hours, whatever I worked. But my notes aren't all done. So I either have to sit at my desk finishing these notes, or I have to go home, do them at home, or tomorrow morning, wake up extra early before I start doing my other stuff and do the notes. So as you can see, burnout can start happening very soon and very easily for physicians. So the struggle is real, but it's a worthwhile struggle. Yvette, I'm scared. I don't want to get the flu shot. It gives you the flu. It does all this bad stuff. I don't want it. You better get it or you can wear a mask all, <laughs> all, all flu season. Would you like some cold spray first? I don't, do I want cold spray? No, I'm already cold as is. It will numb the area. Oh my God. I wish I wore an undershirt today for the video. Okay. She said no heavy lifting, but why? <laughs> I want a heavy lift. No, no, no irritation. Just in case Please. you have some type of discomfort. No. Elevated temperature. You can take it on what you normally take. Drink it's as happening. much fluid as possible. It's happening. Take the pressure off of your arm. Let it hang like, free so you can just sit up a little bit. No pressure on oh the arm. It's happening. There. There's so much Are nudity in here. Wait. Wait, I want to get a good shot. Okay. You ready? Go. One, two, three, thirty-five. Oh. Oh, I'm just kidding. It doesn't hurt. It actually doesn't. It, it actually feels good. good. It feels like a relief because I'm no longer going to get the flu. Well, at least 40 to 60% of the time. <laughs> 40 to 60. I'm about to walk out of the office without my tie. Straight Magic Mike style. This is what happens when it's almost 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are, Vet? Yes. Where? Home and in school. Margaret, do you know where your child is? Well, at least you got 33%. Woo! Long day in the office, but we saved some lives, took care of business. Now I'm gonna head home, walk and feed the bear, maybe do some more work at home. But that's what a day in the hospital's like, boys and girls. Hope you enjoyed.